it's always just that you hear in these kinds of crises, oh, well, yeah, we didn't have the right kind of regulation. We'll get it right this time. Now that we've learned once again through trial and error that the kind of regulation we had didn't really do the job, we need a new kind of regulation or we need different regulators. Uh, that it actually makes more sense than what I sometimes hear, which is this was a crisis of a laissez-faire banking system or this is the result of too much deregulation in the last 10 years. There hasn't been any deregulation in the last 10 years. This is a crisis of a regu heavily regulated banking system. Um, and the idea that we can get regulation right this time is really wishful thinking. Uh, it's hard to think of all the unintended consequences that regulations have when banks who are, you know, have a profit motive to do this figure out ways around the regulations or figure out ways to game the regulations. So we tried under the Basel II Accord regulating bank capital, right? So banks had to hold a certain amount of capital against risky assets on their balance sheets. So what did the banks do? They moved the risky assets off their balance sheets into special uh, structured investment vehicles, which made the healthiness of the banks, the solvency of the banks, very much more opaque. And in the crisis, we saw that banks were reluctant to lend to each other because they didn't know whether the other banks were fundamentally solvent. And we created that problem by trying to regulate their capital. So we need to somehow think about untangling this thicket of regulation and getting to a more simple, transparent system where the market will regulate banks, where shareholders and creditors will uh, choose which banks are credit worthy. And there will once again be a penalty to a bank in the marketplace for behaving in a risky fashion.